Shalom. Giving all praise to Yahweh by Shemel Shai by Shemukak Wadash. I hope you can hear me clearly. Giving all praise to Yahweh by Shemel Shai by Shemukak Wadash. Shalom to the 144,000 rest of the elect out there. Shalom to you all. Anyway, this is a video. What am I going to call this? Uh, a few words on the interview between uh, Sam uh, Kestenbaum and the IUIC. And this is a video that was put up by Friends of the Prophet. Shalom to you, bro brother. Uh, what is IUIC doing? The family of the word is real close. So I remember when this video came out, I wasn't sure 10 years ago, 8 years ago, whatever. It was actually 6 years ago. It was uh, 2017. So this right here was put up. I guess recently. So this is an old interview from uh, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. We're talking almost uh, seven years. Seven years. So what I did was I put in Sam, Sam uh, Keston Bomb, which he's a, a JJ. We call him JJs. And I went to the actual. Let me come on and come back over here. So this is the actual original video, IUIC event. Um, as you can see, six years ago. So I'm just going to let it play, and then I'm going to stop it, and I'm going to uh, precepts come to me. You know, if he goes off on something. But in this video, if they didn't do, I, I don't know if he, if they did two video, two two interviews, or this is one, because I remember when this came out, because we did a video on this, focusing on this video, but he might have did two videos. But they do mention GMS, the interviewer, and uh, Sam Kestenbaum, he writes for uh, several uh, publications. Let's say he he also writes for. Uh, the New York Times. So I guess you can say he's a high, high respected uh, writer, legit writer. So now I'm right here at 3826. Um, I'm just going to let it play. See where the spirit takes me. In the, Correct. Uh, and in the, the, the Sabbath kind of st stricture, or the, uh, the, the, the pro this prohibition on the Sabbath is one example. Mm -hmm. um, and there are many examples, okay. like adultery. Uh -huh. uh, in the black community, not just the black, I, I would say in the world, you have such a thing as boyfriend and girlfriend, mm -hmm. right? Which is a code word for fornication, mm -hmm. sex without marriage. Mm -hmm. And that was being perpetrated. And we said, no, the Bible's talk, Hebrews 13 and 4 talks about marriage. It's not supposed to be, oh, I met a, a, this woman, I, my girlfriend now, she go gets another man and I go get another woman. That's filth. That's fornication. That's mm -hmm. whole mm -hmm. So. These are examples of things we started to notice and observe. If you let me let me start that now. He said if a, if, if boyfriend and girlfriend they have sex and a man, woman goes get another man and man go get another woman, that's fornication, which is adultery, which is half correct. If a if a man deals with another, he has a, pr a principal woman, that is his wife, whether it be common law wife or they sign papers. If that man is with another woman that's not dealing with a, uh, a man, um, that's not fornication. It's fornication when the woman uh, deals with another man outside of the union of the that, that particular man and the woman. Um, and I believe that uh, there's a situation with uh, a son, and I'll find out in time, he was uh, suspended from the school for the act of uh, adultery and, you know, the first thing that popped in my head, oh, he dealt with a, another uh, sister in the school that's married to a brother, so they, you know, they, they suspended him. But I believe, but I could be wrong, I'm really dark on this one, that he had a wife or has a wife and he slept with some other chick, maybe that's not even in the school, that doesn't have a man at all. I don't know what this, that's not adultery. That's not adultery. So let's listen on. Apart today from many other Israelite camps. Okay. 
All right. Um, we could spend more time on all these things, but I wanted to keep going. And and and, and, I, and I hope that after this exchange, this is not, I, I hope this is not the only time I speak with you. This, you this, this you is, can call us this, up this, whenever. This, this is my hope. Um, as long as you do right. <laughs> Don't be fake news and save up lives. <laughs> um, House of David to IUIC. Um, no. Uh, House of, after House of David. Um, two of the senior men who were over me set up 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, two men that were over me set up 12 tribes of Israel. 12 tribes of Israel was already 12 tribe production. This, the two men that he said that was over him, uh, were uh, yeah, um, Ayasha. Is it Yaasha, Yaasha, which is Josiah in the scriptures? You know, when you read about King Josiah, the Hebrew is uh, um, Yaasha, Yaasha, and then you had Rahab, which they were a part of my. They were all a part of my camp, <clears throat> and um, this is when we got kicked out uh, during the time of uh, the uh, House of David. They wanted us out anyway. They wanted everybody out. They just wanted to have their own little crew. And I guess, um, and he called me after the split, after the split of the House of David. He called me. He had my number, and he broke everything down to me. I don't know if you remember that. I, I don't even know how he had my number. And he explained how shit went haywire. Because let me bring it back. Let me bring it back some. spend more time on all these things but I wanted to keep going and and and, and, I, and I hope that after this exchange this is I, I hope this is not the only time I speak with you this, 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 you this can is, call us this, up this, this, this is my hope um, as long as you do right <laughs> don't be fake news and save up lives <laughs> um, house of David to this individual familiar but I believe he fell off I haven't seen this man these two I believe this is Captain Joel if I'm not mistaken I don't know this gentleman's name but um I seen him I believe he's still here Captain Joel is still around this individual I, I, like I said I remember his face I believe he uh became disenchanted you see what they're eating <laughs> eating that you couldn't pay me to eat that stuff you couldn't pay me to eat these uh donuts there's some Dunkin' Donuts. You know, that's how you get sick. And they drink, well, he's drinking, uh, he don't know what's going on. He's drinking Poland Spring, which is the worst. He might as well be drinking sewer water. So anyway, let's go on. Let's go on. Let's go on. IUIC. Um, no. Uh, House of, after House of David, um, two of the senior men who were over me set up. 12 tribes of Israel. There was another school mm. instead of 12 tribes of Israel. And then after that fell apart. Bear me for a minute. For that, for, so now I had to hit the mute, put the mute button uh, back on. Demute, whatever you say. This is when they kicked Mo out. And I told King Masha, I said, they're going to wind up kicking you out, King Masha. Now I ain't kicking me out. I'm the king. Sure enough, they kicked him out. They didn't really kick him out, but there was a uh, tension, and they didn't believe that. And this is what he told me. They don't. By the way, this is fair use. Fair use. He told me that uh, he didn't believe that Masha was King David. That's why they split in the first place. Well, this is King David. You can't talk bad about King David. He's, you know, he's he's a you know he's the top man on the planet Earth under the the Messiah. He had a dream. A dream that uh, King Mashar told him to pass out some rice and put the pork juice in the rice. He woke up from the dream and he said, that's not King David. So he, I guess he told the other two. And um, they was like, this guy, this guy's just a nigga. He ain't King David. So uh, it's ironic how they split because of King David or Mashar. And how now they don't see him as King David. But I told Masha, I told him, I said, they're going to wind up kicking you out. I said, watch what them niggas going to do. 
because they kicked us out unjustly, but we were happy with it about concerning um, the Cornelius thing. And he now teaches that all those guys that fell off, they went back into the world. Some of them, if they're still around, they teach that Cornelius is Israelite. Something that we taught that they kicked us out of the school for. The scriptures say they shall cast you out of their temples. It says synagogues, but it's temples or their houses of worship. So let's come on back, put it back on mute. Then I set up. Um, you heard what he said. He said, then I set up. I set up. Because there was a break between Nathaniel and uh, the other two. And they were doing their own thing. They just said, we're not, they, don't, they didn't respect the seven. They didn't respect the leadership. They didn't respect High Priest Ariah. Because you wouldn't go behind uh, to, Ma, to King Mashar, Mashar, and say, we got to go, these guys ain't right, believing that Ariah, you know, is, is, is a prophet, you know, that the Lord is dealing with him. And to this day, he's, he calls uh, Ariah my, my elder. Why, why would you leave your elder like that? Why would you cause a, a split or a schism? So let's listen, let's listen to some more. Let me go ahead and mute this. Yeah, and what was what was twelve tribes of Israel like? Uh, it started off good. We kept many of the practices because Moshe had died. Moshe had died. We left. Then he died. Excuse me. And um, the senior men all over me set up twelve tribes, and from there we had their doctrine sprouted up in there about don't keep the commandments anymore. You you saw that? And this is what he told me on the phone. So this confirms it. They, in case you don't believe not, um, Bishop Nate never called you and said he don't. They don't. They don't keep. They stop keeping the laws. Well, here he's saying it right here. 40, 40 minutes and twenty eight seconds in. They're they're about don't keep the commandments anymore. And I don't know if he goes further into it, but this is what he told me. He said nobody could keep the commandments. We're under grace, and you got to prove that you're not keeping the commandments by eating pork in front of us. That's the spirit of Antiochus Epiphanes. So there was a heavy demon in that school. So come on. It's evil. If you keep, just like the church, Christian. You heard what he said. It's evil to keep the commandments. And then they also taught, oh, we don't got to go out on the highways and the byways no more. Then we, we were teaching in Harlem and 34th, and they, a couple of years, I forget the exact time, they, they started uh, going to camps. Wherever we were set up, they would be up the street. But they would make sure they, they were far away enough where we didn't know if they, they were up there. And then some brothers said, there's an Israelite group up the street. We went up there, it was them. And basically, we cursed him out. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> it's always so a lot of mess. Now, the two that were over him, they're not doing the work. Whether they, you know, of course, you're going to know you're Israelite or whatever. But they're not on the highways and the byways. They're not doing sit downs. They're not in the seat of a, a prophet, you know, the teachers. Uh, you will see your teachers, merely, merely paraphrasing with Isaiah. 30 and 20 says. So let me mute this. The church says, um, uh, I got to get it. Romans 6. I, I need to show you what the foundation of the false doctrine is. Romans 6 and 15. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. So what Paul really meant was when he says we are not under the law, he meant the law of Moses in reference to animal sacrifice. But under grace, meaning the grace of Christ who died on the cross. But we still have to keep the commandments. That's why it says, what then, shall we sin? Sin means what? Do you know what sin means? Give me your definition. I, I don't have a definition. I'll give you what the Bible says. Give me, give me I'll the I'll tell definition. you what God says. The definition of sin. First John 3 and 4 says... You guys love your language, really, really. 
it says, whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So that's what sin is, breaking God's law. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when Paul said in Romans 6, 15, what then? Shall we sin, meaning shall we break God's commandments? Because we are not under the law, meaning the law of Moses, of animal sacrifice, but under grace, the grace of Christ. God forbid, he says, no. We have to continue keeping God's laws. And that's what a lot of our... That had nothing to do with sacrifice. Ultimately, it did. You got to, you know, let me, let me go ahead and read that. Uh, let me do this. Let me do this. Okay, Romans 6. Okay, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? We're under grace. Like you pay insurance, you lay it on your insurance, you get a great 10-day grace period or two week, whatever the case may be. That, that doesn't mean you don't pay the thing. You got a grace period. So we continue in sin, meaning breaking the law, that grace may abound, the most high forbid, how shall we that are dead in sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Yahweh HaMashiach were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as the Messiah was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness and life, meaning you start keeping the laws. You can't, you can't say, oh, well, I got grace. I can break, you know, you deliberately break a law here and break a law there. For, we, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. So the main thing is, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Oh, we got grace. We can commit. We can openly just commit sin, commit adultery. No. Now, are we going to continue to commit sin? Yeah. Romans, Romans 7, which is the next chapter over. He said, it's not me that sinneth, but sin that dwelleth in me. So uh, it also says, I believe it's in Romans 8. To more, matter of fact, let me go to that. A lot, a lot in the book of Romans, the, write, the writings of Paul. Let me try this. There is therefore now, now no condemnation to them which are in Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life is the Messiah, uh, Yahweh Shai, uh, have made me free from the law of sin and death, meaning under the curse, for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh we sin because we're weak through the flesh that's why the apostle paul said what he said in romans chapter 7 it's not me that doeth it but sin that dwelleth in me so you got to fight it said the most high sending his his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh because he didn't commit he didn't break one law he's just sacri perfect sacrificial lamb that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be for to be kind of minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. 
because the carnal mind is enmity against the Most High, for it is not subject to the law of the Most High, neither indeed can can be. Because ultimately, when you come into this thing, you you make you 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 know you discipline yourself to keep the law. Keeping the law is about discipline. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please the Most High. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of the Most High dwell in you. Now if ye now if any man have not the spirit of the Messiah, he is none of his. And if and if the Messiah be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. I'm looking for the word mortify. Okay, it's mortal bottles. Okay, uh, 11 verse. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahweh Shai from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Yahweh Shai, which is the father from the dead, shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwell in you. I'm trying to bear me for a minute. Let me try this. I'm in the 12th first. Okay, I'm in the Okay. 13th verse. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body ye shall live let's look up the word mortify to put to death So when you start from the first verse, that's what it's talking about. You're dead in sins. And that's why Yahweh Shai died without sin. So you keep the law to the best of your ability. That's what he's saying. Read Romans chapter 7 again. So let's come on back. Let me mute this. people that's the problem this is the reason we went into slavery beneath Europeans today and not just Europeans we went into slavery under ancient Babylon uh, Persians Greeks and Romans why when you read the Bible the Israelites were constantly going into slavery why for breaking God's commandments and that's where we have not reached the and this is back when he didn't teach about the hell doctrine this is something relatively new I don't know if it was six months ago a year ago I, I don't know. They got to. They got to tell me when they started teaching that nonsense. But uh, so he so he said we broke the laws. That's where we went into the slavery under the Romans, Babylonians, and so forth. The question is, why did we break the laws? That's the question, because the Most High programmed us to break the laws. So if the pro, the Most High programmed us to go off. Why is he going to condemn us to to serve, um, to go to hell forever? Does that make sense? The Most High is setting you up for a fall, uh, fall. No, all Israel is going to be saved. So that that's that's something that they're going off on. Clearly going off on, man. And that madness is spreading because you got the young flies teaching that nonsense too, which they're going off. So let's listen to a little bit more. The point yet in this society, we must keep the commandments. And anytime we talk the commandments, there's opposition to keep us from the commandments. Like um, the LGBT, uh, LGBTQ, you know these guys, right? <laughs> Where they put 
uh, flyers. You make it sound like it's one of like the One West camps. Like the, all no, 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 no. <laughs> that, that, that's like <laughs> SPLC. <laughs> SPLC is like LGBTQ, <laughs> where they put flyers throughout um, uh, Brooklyn and Bronx that says, we'll pay you to um, inform or go against any group that <laughs> denounces your way of life. They got flyers all throughout mm. Bronx saying that. Mm. Like they'll pay you 20 bucks an hour, something like that. Fifth, might be $15 an hour. But there's one video we did on it where they, we showed the actual flyers. Why? Because homosexuality is the new fashion of America on the, from the time of Barack Obama. It's become fashionable. Where according to God, it's not fashionable. You paying attention, sir? Yes. It's yes, not sir, fashionable. Yes. You understand? By the way, that's uh, fornication, Revelation 17 and 4. That has nothing to do with the MOTB. Fornication is the, uh, when you look that word up, um, it goes into, you know, filthiness um, in a uh, abominable sexual fash manner. Uh, that's why you had the thing, what is that, in Ghana? Uh, I believe it was Ghana. You had the president and his so-called cabinet. They rejected uh, what the U.S. said concerning um, passing laws to protect the alphabet people, and he said, nah, we're not going to protect them. We're going to lock them up for an extended period of time, or we're going to put them to death. And they even had Kamala Harris. Um, and Kamala Harris, by the way, she could never run for president. Nobody would vote for her. Jake would not. Jake is not connect, connected her, connected with her in any way. They, they ain't feeling her. They'll, they'll vote for Trump before they vote for her. So please, <laughs> y'all better hope that... Uh, you know, Biden don't die because she'll be the president and she's going to actually try to run, but she's she going to embarrass herself. So anyway, let's, let's, let's go, let's move on. Oh, my because it's counterproductive. It's counterproductive. You understand? Yes. Um, um, sorry. I lost. You got a brain I, I lost, Yeah, I lost. Three well, three. I'll finish my thought. It's homosexuality. Our people must repent, not just from homosexuality, but from adultery, lying, stealing, murder, idolatry. All these things all fall in the same category of sin. It's not that one is worse than another. Ooh, like the people come up to the camp from the LGBT. Where's my phone? Oh, and they'll try to record us and go, do you want to kill homosexuals? They'll be like, you want to kill homosexuals? And brother's like, no, they need to repent, just like a thief needs to repent. Oh, um, well, do you, do you think we need to be put on an island and murdered? Some, are you listening? That's not what we said. You understand? Mm -hmm. For example, let me show you something. I got another scripture for you in 1 Corinthians. I got to show you. See? Okay. I got to show Let's you. Go to Corinthians, Fact, but then come back to 12 tribes of yes, Israel. Yes, I'm going to come back. Okay. To, watch this. This is for the LGBTQ community. 1 Corinthians 6 and I. Listen good. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, watch this Sam, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, that's homosexuals, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Here it comes. And such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified. Some of the Israelites at this time used to be idolaters, effeminate, abusers of mankind. And the message has always been, change your life. Never, we're going to kill you, we're going to murder you. That never was the message. But the LGBTQ and the SPLC will put it out there, we're a hate group, we want to kill people. That's not true. Many of the men and women that come into Israel United in Christ came from these lifestyles. It's about us keeping the commandments so we can have a better life, so that we can inherit the kingdom here on earth. That's all this is about. You understand? Yeah, no, that's clear. I, I, mean, I, understand, I understand what you're saying. It's okay. Um, so the 12 tribes of Israel was a, was a relatively short-lived camp. That was short camp. And what, um, and, but, right, and so, so there, there were some kind of doctrinal differences. Yes, that, don't keep God's laws. Uh, that was the difference. Okay. Don't keep the laws. And, it, and, and don't get me wrong, it wasn't just from House of David and 12. That's the way I came. There were other right. Israel, there were other Israel yeah. like and I'm still, I'm still just from that. Crying, still in my mind, I'm still with your, you know, yeah. with your thread. I know that there are a multiplicity yeah. of other 
you know ways people came into this. Right. Um, and and so twelve the twelve tribes of Israel still um, there were no kind of elders from the original still kind of no. with that. Okay. And were you in leadership at 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 either of those? Uh, House of David, Mashah has set up a council, and the council was made up, I believe, of fifteen men. I was the youngest one on the council. Um, so if you throw me in leadership there, but I was the young man under there. From twelve from twelve tribes, there was leadership, I think, of eight, and I was the third youngest. And do you, okay. And do you know when, uh, what Brown, what year that? Twelve tribes is that was around two thousand somewhere around there. Okay, and so um, ninety nine two thousand. Okay, so that was really a, a pretty short. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and and so the, the 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 kind of central doctrine there was like would still be kind of identify. I mean, it's still a kind of it would be identifiable identifiable to me in terms of like you had the twelve tribe you had the tr tribe chart. Yes. Um, and were you using the the Sean, the, the, the holy tongue, as they say. The no, no, we had stopped by that time. By 12 tribes, we had stopped. House of David, you were using? 12, uh, House of David, we were still doing it. Okay. And Masha was still going to jokes and say, do you know what you just read in the Hebrew? We go, no. Okay, so, so, so you're, you're kind of suggesting or telling me that. You heard what he just said. They were using it, even, um, you know, the House of David and King Masha, they were using the Hebrew. Now, when they set up 12, you're hearing it from him. You see, you, you, you see it written. If you can't hear it, if you're hard to hear and you can read it. Read it, Richard, inside joke. I had to say that. So they stop, So that around that time, they said, we're not going to use the the, uh, the Hebrew no more because we don't know what the Hebrew is. And the Hebrew go, well, 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 wait a minute. How, how can you know that the scriptures are right? Sometimes you have to go to the Hebrew to get certain words. And you're not a scholar goes into the a Bible scholar has to go into the Hebrew and into the Greek and all into the into the Greek, whether it be in the New Testament or the Old Testament. If they come across the scripture and they don't fully understand in the Old Testament, let's go into the Hebrew word. Let's go into the root of the word. The term is the term is etymology. So if they if they're gonna say, well, we don't know the Hebrew, well then how do you know that the men that were appointed by I believe it was 47 men. Somebody can, you know, help me on that. I'm not going to look for it. But uh, how are they going to know whether the King James Bible is, you know, the exact translation? Even King James, if you got the Red Bible, he made a statement. He said that this this King James Version Bible, how did he say it, is a, is a revised, constantly revised. So there were certain times where they had to kind of redo some things. Oh, we got the wrong word for that. We got to change that. So let's 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 uh let's listen. Let me mute it again. That Masha was kind of anti. Right, he, right. He, he he never read it. He just sit there, and then he would ask us to translate. We okay. never could. So so you're saying that other elders kind of promoted the yes that that language in Masha. I was right. kind of anti that language. Correct. You know, probably like specifically your right. Ari, it's, it, this would be like Arya's like right thing. I right? know we had the um. The, I mean, was was Arya the person who you know revealed or introduced the that language to yes the community? Okay. Um, they had a, a Hebrew script which looked very similar to Arabic. It looked similar to that. So I remember sitting down with uh, Masha. I said, hey, I said, where can I find this? Because uh, I, I could go to books and see the ancient Hebrew in like, um, what's that guy's name? Uh, who wrote the Hebrew? What's his name? Um, From Jerusalem. Um, ben, Yehuda. Ben, uh, ben Yehuda, right. Eliezer Ben Yehuda. Thank mm -hmm. you, brothers. Eliezer Ben Yehuda. You familiar with him? Yes. He's the one from 1948, around that time, who's, right. who concocted. Mm -hmm. I'm using, can I use that word? Concocted today's Hebrew. It was before 1948. It was uh, 1800s. Because uh, they already knew, they, were, they started speaking it before they came into the land of Israel. I was just doing some research on that. His name was Yitzhak Perlman. And he had his son in the household 
the guy that put the they got the book the Hebrew Bible the Hebrew English English Hebrew uh, dictionary Ben Yehudi's dictionary he had his he had his son his uh, young son they said in the household his wife they said we can't speak any other language but Hebrew They're, his form of Hebrew you couldn't even sing songs unless they were in the Hebrew so his son was raised up to to speak fluent Hebrew, their form of Hebrew, and his daughter as well, his younger sister. So you get the history on that. So that was, that was, and he said that it came from, he, well, he made a statement. He said that the, the Arabs, the language that they speak, that's the original Hebrew. And they borrowed a lot of things from the Arabs. So that's a little history on that. Okay, so let me. And it, when you read about him, he took, uh, the words from Arabic, Germany, France, it, and made a, a new language. And when you didn't take it from Germany and France, that people you got Jake saying that the Yiddish is he Yiddish is not Hebrew. It's like a German hip talk, like Turkish. That's not a Hebrew word. Arabic. He 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 said it was. He said the original Hebrew spoken Hebrew are the Arabs. The Arabs they Abu for father. Uh, they say Ibn for for son. They'll say Allah for God, which in Hebrew when you come across the word God in the Bible, the word there is Allah. Our Lord on the cross said Allah ya Allah ya. You saying my God, my God. The Caucasian from World War II, from the Caucasian who came from Poland, Ukraine, Russia, came to the land, they had to study his new form of Hebrew. You understand what I'm saying? You look confused. No, no, I'm with you. <laughs> no, because they didn't know. Those people that came from Europe, different parts of Europe, to come to the land of Israel, <laughs> they, didn't speak he they didn't speak Hebrew. They spoke whatever. If they're from Poland, they spoke the Polish tongue. If they're from Germany, they spoke the German tongue. So they had to learn it. So when did they start speaking it fluently? Through their sons and their sons' sons. Because they were looking to get into the land of Israel since the late 1800s. They had a plan to go into the land of Israel. To fulfill a, a, a false prophet, a prophecy. So now let's listen. Let me mute this again. He's looking at me like, what are you nah, saying? Nah, I'm with you. Okay, so that language is made up. That's not the pure language. And this is what many Israelite camps argue over. And not never understanding what we read earlier, Zephaniah 3, 8 and 9. Mm -hmm, you, familiar? Mm -hmm. you remember that? Yes. What did it say? Yeah. What did the it say? language will come, you know, exactly. over the time, right? Okay, I got a question. Let's go to the scriptures. He said, when the kingdom comes, and not so many words, then we're going to learn the Hebrew. Okay, so now, how do you explain this, Bishop Nathaniel? Isaiah 19. Okay, I'll start at the 17th verse, maybe the 18th verse. Okay, in the land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt. And we know this is not talking about ancient he Egypt. Ms. Ryan was, it was talking about America. Everyone that is a prophecy. Everyone that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid in himself. Yeah, they're afraid of the fact that we're saying that we're the people. That's why they're coming against us, because they know that we're the people. Because So they got to be knocked off. They're imposters. So the imposters, they, we, we got the information. They're fugitives. <laughs> Cain was a fugitive. They're, they stem from Cain because of the counsel of Yahweh of hosts, uh, which he hath determined against it, against Egypt. In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt shall, future tense, so we know it's not talking about ancient Egypt, in the land of Egypt, the spiritual Egypt, Revelation 11 and 8, speak the language of Canaan. 
I'm going to look up the language of Canaan and swear by Yahweh of hosts, one shall be called the city of destruction. Uh, uh, Babylon is a city of destruction because it's going to be destroyed. So let me see. And this is a good, beautiful chapter. I got to go through this again. Let me do this. Language of Canaan. Let's see what comes up. So do we know, do know, do we know the Hebrew? Yes, we do. Do we know the Hebrew fluently? No, we don't. Uh, bear me for a minute. Okay, this is what I want to do. Let's see what comes up. Let me do this. Okay. Five cities shall speak the language of Canaan. Let's go Canaanites. Okay. The only living Canaanite language is Hebrew. Five cities. Now, it is Nate, uh, uh, Bishop Nathaniel, is he going to say, well, that's talking about ancient uh, Egypt? He's if you go to Revel, um, Isaiah chapter 19 and says, what is this talking about Egypt? He's going to tell you that's talking about America. So it says that five cities of America shall speak the language of the Canaanites. The language of the Canaanites, the only living Canaanite language is Hebrew, which was revived as a spoken language in the 19th and 20th century. That's what uh, Yitzhak Perlman uh, uh, see also Hebrew language Phoenician language Phoenician language Phoenician this is a Greek way of saying Canaanite so let me let me okay right here Phoenician language uh, an, ex, uh, an extinct a Canaanite Semitic language Semitic uh, originally spoken in the region surrounding the cities of Tyre and Sidon, extensive uh, Tyro Sidon trade, blah, 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 blah. Let me do this. Let me go to images. There we go. It's the language of Canaan. Five cities shall speak the language of Canaan. Ah, ba, ga, da, ha, wa, za, ka, ta, ya, ka, la, ma, na, Sa, uh, sa, pa. What is this? A ra, taza, qua. Ra, sha, tha. It's the same thing. There's a language of Canaan. Five cities shall speak the language of Canaan. I'm trying to find a better sign. Bear me for a minute, please. Assyrian, Aramaic, whatever you want to call it. Here we go. There's a better one. Okay, this is a par, right? Ah uh, and tha. I am the Alpha and Omega. That's Greek for the first and the last. And uh, Hebrew is, he, I, I am not. John heard them say, Yahweh Shai say, I am the Ah uh, and the Tha, because John spoke Hebrew. So now, Bishop Nathaniel has to explain, what does this mean? What does this mean? Isaiah 19 and 18. Actually, you can start from 17. Actually, you can read the whole 
You, you can't tell me he's talking about ancient Hebrew. Because it said, shall speak. I'm not going to read this whole thing. So, so, so the Hebrew is being spoken, maybe not fluently. Let's come back here. What the language will come, you know exactly this time right now. So they reject and go, no, uh, we, we, we have to do this language. Mm -hmm. That was going, but, but, they, but they were kind of, we have to do this language. Five cities shall speak the language of Canaan. I looked up the word Canaan language, language of the Canaanites. The only language that the ancient Canaanites spoke was the Hebrew. And you saw the ancient Hebrew, the, what we call the Lashawan Kodash. So now you got to explain that. Maybe you can do it next week. We'll be watching you. We'll leave the lights on for you. Let me mute. But they also weren't using the, you know, the, the white man's language. They were, they were using different, they were, you, you, I hadn't heard of this, this kind of Arab, Arab, Arab. Oh, I, I'm glad you reminded me about that. So I asked my Shah, I said, I said, I can see the ancient Hebrew in books like Eliezer ben Yehuda, like, but where did the script come from? He said, we made that up. We made that up. I said, oh. That's true. They did make it up. They said they'll tell you that they made it up. They made a form of the script. There is a script, actual original script, Hebrew, which I'm, I, I studied it, but I forgot it. But I can get it back. Look at look at the script. I, I'll memorize it in one week. Okay. So let's listen on. So all that always stuck in my mind. It always stayed with me. Now remember, he had did this video. 20 some odd years ago, 25 years ago, whatever the case may be, with Bun Yum Yum from the HODC. And they did the whole thing about the Hebrews. So now he's going to Masha asking a question. When Masha wasn't fluent in the Hebrews, Ariya and Shalomar that was fluent in the Hebrews. By the way, Shalomar was a student under Ariya that surpassed Ariya. He could speak, he can speak fluent ancient Hebrew and he can speak to the small hats. He can have, yeah, Ariya was able to do that. I knew a few words, Ariya knew a couple, some words. He can put some words out there, but Shalomar was able to speak, have a full conversation for hours with any small hat out there. So the spirit was on Shalomar to really go into that Hebrew. All right? So this, you know what he's doing? He's, the scriptures say, doubting about questions, right? Which cometh, which cometh strife. So he went to Masha, knowing that Masha wasn't no expert in it, he wasn't, Masha wasn't deep in the Hebrew. So you asking a man, for, you asking a man questions that you know he doesn't have answers to. And this is the reason why you let, you made sure you couldn't, you know, took, separated Masha from Ariya, because um, Ariya was a top teacher. He couldn't play that bullshit. So, so that showed you that he had doubt why would he do that two hour, what, what is two hours, hour and a half, whatever, hour and 45 minutes with Bun Yum Yan and go through all them books to really throw it all out? That's why they don't teach the Hebrew. They're questioning that shit. So is there a foundation? Is the, is the Most High there? And hell no, the Most High ain't with the IUIC. That they ain't no different from uh, the, the, the NOI. You know why there's so many people following the NOI? Because they all wear the same suits. They march. You know, that whole marching thing, they got that from the movie X, which they used to do back there. Oh, I got to get down. Look at them black men march. They all dress the same. A, a Jacob buy a car based upon the way it looks on the outside. They don't check under the hood like an Edomite. Okay? So let's, 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 let's listen on. Let me mute it. So I didn't make a big thing of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I just file it, you know. And so... so why do these elders make up this? Because the languages we have is not our language. Just like our names, our surnames, they're your name. We made up, they made up the language because of the fulfillment of Isaiah. They were fulfilling prophecy. They were fulfilling prophecy. Isaiah chapter 19.
names. Right. <laughs> What's your last? Kirstenbaum, right? Kestenbaum. Kestenbaum. Yeah. You'll find some family with the last name Kestenbaum. Look it up. You'll find them. They're out there. But you have all of our know. people have European last names because those names are slave masters' names. So the right. No, no. I, I, I don't mean to be dismissive of this at all. But you understand. Yes, you I, agree. I see what you're saying. Yeah, you agree. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I understand the the. Absolutely, I understand the the what you're talking about. With Can you tell black people their names is not theirs? Just tell them. <laughs> I'm not going to say that to the camera. Um, Hebrew, ancient Hebrew. Did you speak the the? Lashan Kadosh. The last one, yes. Yeah. Lashan Kadosh. Abinala, Shabbat, Kadosh. Shemaya. Yes, I did all of that. Uh-huh. Shemaya, Yasharala, Eleheno. Yes, I did all of that. Mm-hmm. But now. Eleheno. Eleheno, Shemaya, Yasharala. Um, Shemaya, Yasharala, Yahweh, Allah, Inawa, Yahweh. Not Eleheno. That's that, that's that, 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 uh, you know, uh, Yitzhak Perlman talk. I was passed. Yeah. Now you still use the Shalom greeting. Yes, we still do. We don't, we don't, uh, like even the names that we have. Um, let me read the scripture to you. Please. Please. <laughs> um, what, what, I, what I like to show you, and I, I need you to understand that what we do and or say is based on scripture. I don't want you to think that I'm a mad scientist. I sat down in a laboratory did one I, day and I just made did stuff I, did up. Did I say? He said, what we do is based upon scripture. Now, there's a lot of things that they do that is not based on scripture. You can only have one wife. You can't have more than, if you have two wives, the second wife is a whore. If you have five wives, the next four is a whore. That's not scriptural. Um, There's a lot of things that they go off on. There's a handful of things that they go off on that's clearly not scriptural. Say this? No, I'm just, you know. Taking precautionary measures. Isaiah 44 and 5 says, One shall say, I am the Lord, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. And another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord, and surname himself by the name of Israel. Meaning, we shall start to return to our true surname, which is Israel. Mm -hmm. This is prophecy. And this is what we're doing today. This is why many of us take the surname of Israel Mm -hmm. today. Because the names that we were given were your names. Right that was branded in our backs and on our mother's breasts. So we have to give those names up. Why did you form IUIC? IUIC was formed, like I said earlier, out of necessity. Mm -hmm. Understanding that um, in Matthew 19, a young man asked Christ, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Christ said, if you, if you want eternal life, keep the commandments. And observing all the camps, the splinter camps in Harlem, Philadelphia, Chicago, nobody's teach, keep teaching the commandments. It's always the white man, the white man, the white man. And like I said, okay, the white man did all this evil to us. Yes, but at the end of the day, am I a liar still? Am I still an adulterer, a thief, an extortioner? If the answer is yes, then we're not doing our job as a service of God. You understand? So we have to come back to the commandments. If we want eternal life, if every, a lot of nations accuse or no, thank you, accuse and know that Europeans have destroyed nations worldwide. In Saudi Arabia, what do they call Europeans? The great, have you heard of it? The great Shatan. You never heard that before? Okay, sure. I know you heard of it. Yeah. So it's not nothing that just came out of America. A lot of nations say that, say, listen, look what all they've done. So, okay, they did that. But if I'm still uh, having sex without marriage with my sister, Mm -hmm. I'm having children not taking care of them. You understand? Mm -hmm. I'm of no use. Sure. You understand? Yeah, I mean, was that, but are you telling me that the, 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 this doctrinal, Sh- things that, that were happening at Twelve Tribes. Don't flip to this yet, please. I, you know, stay, I always got to stay. Go ahead and talk. I'm listening. I'm listening. Because you know, because because I, this history is very important too. The the contemporary history, and and, and that's really what I, yes, want to get here too. Okay. You know, yes. Um, 
so the, 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 the 12 tribes, you're saying that there was kind of this doctrinal divisions about keeping the law, uh, whether that needed to be kept or not. Um, I'll give an example. Is that, is that, but is that what, you know, what caused that yes. group to splinter apart? Yes. And, 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 and when you left there, did you immediately go to, to found IUIC? Yes, immediately. And immediately. did you bring, you know, and, and so, so this was the, the first time that you kind of were really in a position of, of leadership. Yes. And did you bring kind of most of that camp with you? No. How, how, okay. I, want, I had to start new. One brother came with me that was Kanagabar. He's the uh, bishop um, who's along with me. Okay. Only him. Um, and I had, to, I had to find him because when that, when that fell apart, many people got disheartened. So I looked, uh, my car, bro actually my car broke down and I needed help with my car. So I said, who knows cars? So I called Kanai and he came over to help me with the car. So I said, hey, what are you doing? He was like, mm, nothing. I said, listen, we got to start bringing this truth back out again because what we've been through is hell. Mm -hmm. So he said, what do you have in mind? I said, well, come over this Saturday to the house. So they, him and his wife, family came over. We went through scriptures again. I said, we got to start again. So that's how it started. What was the breaking point for you at 12 Tribes? It was so, a group of brothers went to Dominican Republic. And uh, I said, don't go because in Dominican Republic, <laughs> <laughs> in the Dominican Republic, there's a lot of prostitution because our people are poor. I said, don't go, so you're going to make a mistake. I'd say about maybe 11 of them went. They all came back and said, listen, we all fornicated. We couldn't help. The women were too beautiful. So they said, we don't want this Bible stuff no more. We just want to do what we're doing. So, And then what happened was... Um, were well, they were they there on like a, a, a mission of something? Yeah, they, they were there doing. They like, said we're gonna have our flyers. Uh -huh. I'm like, I told them don't go, but I'm like, I was a young guy, but I'm like, they were there. Eh, we're gonna go. We're gonna do it. So, right. Sure enough, fornication, all over the place, condoms flying, all kinds. Of <laughs> so that's what's going on. Yeah. yeah, that was going on. So that was one, and then um, they started to teach a doctrine. Came with the other men that remained behind. Don't keep the commandments. Okay. And it was perceived that it was something evil, you know. Meanwhile, a, adultery and fornication leads to syphilis, mm -hmm. gonorrhea, mm -hmm. things like that. And you can't figure out that that's not the way we should be living. They couldn't figure out, oh, I don't see anything wrong with it. Uh, so, so was it mostly, was it really you that... So you can clearly see that after they got to King Marshall's ears to cause them to break off from, you know, one west, you can see it was nothing but downhill. There was no foundation. There was no foundation with that first split with, with the House of David. There was no foundation there. And today, there's still no foundation. It's a house, the, the IUIC is basically a, um, what's the term, uh, a house of cards. You know, a certain wind come along, it all blows down. One win, I'm blowing at them to that house of cards is, he said, well, we, we don't know the, he the, the Hebrew. We got to wait till the kingdom to get the Hebrew. Um, please explain to me, anybody in the IUIC, please explain to me Isaiah chapter 19. You can do the whole chapter. Matter of fact, this coming weekend, this coming weekend, I'll be looking, I'll be listening. I'll, be, I'll leave the lights on for you. I want you to tell me what Isaiah chapter 19, I believe it's verse 18, 17, 18, five sh cities shall speak the language of Canaan. What is that talking about? Well, let's listen on. Le leaving was, was a kind of a personal choice of yours. Yes. The camp did not like right. break apart. It was apart. still going on uh -huh. for a little while. Okay. So I left. Okay. Started. So it was really a, kind of a personal decision that this place is not yes. keeping the law. Exactly. I need to kind of. Um, they would have tried. They tried to kill me too, but that's another story. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, they said, "Oh, I had a." One brother said, "I had a dream that um, you were teaching the Bible, and there was a long line of us with bats, and we and we treated you like a pinata." I was like, "I said, y'all hitting me?" He said, "Yeah, we were trying to kill you." And then when we when you died, we all went into the kingdom of heaven. So I said, "Really?" So I must have better get out of here. These people are going to try to kill me. So I was out. Hmm. And so, so because had you been kind of speaking again? That shit might happen again when that, hey, when that MOTB, when they make that thing mandatory, the micro C hip, 
they might they they might line up with them bats, with them nails in the bats, <laughs> with chains waiting online to get a piece of you, man. Cause you're gonna have to explain yourself. You're gonna have to explain yourself. When that that's when it's gonna be a big shakeup, baby. When that when that MOTB comes to pass, and you're gonna have to explain your way out of that shit, that bullshit that you've been teaching. It's it's a uh, sin in all of its forms, whether it be political or uh, religious. Some of these some of these guys they're not all fools. Some of these guys are going to say, "Wait a minute, man, GMS was right," and we got to we got to question this guy. Oh, it's going to be a shaky day on that day. Oh, it's going to be a shakeup. So let's listen to some more mutant. It. It's getting very interesting. Or, or, I was speaking against okay. the doctrine of not keeping the commands. Now all of a sudden, right. I was the evil one. Okay. So I said, "Interesting, I have to go." This okay. is straight madness. So that led to that. Okay. And um, what were the early days of IUIC like, in, in, in building that up? That was in my house, in my apartment. And, and sorry, just like geographically, where Twelve Tribes of Israel is, is is here in. That was in Paul. Okay. Around, I believe it was one. 26th Street, 126th okay. Street in Amsterdam. It was around there. In, in, you're a New Yorker. You, mm. you were raised in... I was raised in, yeah. in, in Harlem area and... All over New York. All over New York. My okay. family's from the South, though. Okay. So, so House of David is also in... New York. In Harlem? Uh, now it's in Brooklyn. Okay. But it was. It was. And, and the, either, both of these camps had, had... Because I know that camps today have... Lots of may have different, you know, schools may have camps mm. as you do across the country. No, no, we don't. Well, some do. Some do, most. But do. but but I mean, but I'm, these ones you're talking about, House of David and Twelve Tribes, were, were just like kind of contained uh, yes. camps, just like one uh, one room with congregants coming yes. weekly mm -hmm. for Sabbath yes. learning sessions, like the kind of like, as I might see now with with. Uh, like a room full uh, of congregants and elders up front reading from, preaching from uh, two, like two books, like the, having a reader and a, I don't know the language you, you describe, but you have the a reader, teacher a teacher and a, and a reader. Mm -hmm. So that's, that, that was kind of the, the form of practice at both, at both of these two. Yes. Okay. And it, was that a form that came from? The original. The original one was, okay. And, and, because because I have visited some other Israelite non One West places where similar type of uh, there there is like a reader and a and a, and a preach and a, and a teacher in, in in the same way. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that form originated in you know from maybe you don't like this word originate, but uh, you know you know where was it kind of codified as like an Israelite practice in. Uh, you can open up the book, but yeah, um, I have to. <laughs> but, uh, but but I guess who who revealed that to the people that this was the? Well, since when I came in, it's always been done. Okay. But then you see in scripture, like from the time of Aaron, mm -hmm. Nehemiah, Ezra, you read about um, one teacher and one reader. Okay, so, but, so you read okay. about it. In scripture. Okay, gotcha. But so for, for for as long as you've been doing this, this yes. is the form. Okay. Um, so so now one uh, IUIC, you're in your house. Um, Try and build up this this new school. You have you have your friend and his wife who have joined, mm -hmm. um, and then he moved to Florida. Can I move to Florida? Uh, maybe four months later, he moved to Florida. So it was me and <laughs> my wife and family. So what happened? We had a lot of people come in and out, and it was always an issue, which is the same issue as today: is sin, whether to keep God's commandments or not. Some people come came in through my apartment smoking weed, uh, wanting multiple wives, things of that nature. And when the laws of God come out, you have a choice to make. You're either going to conform to what is written or not. Or not. Okay, you can have many wives in the kingdom. I mean, in, uh, in, um, if you're an Israelite, you can have many wives. Um, Isaiah 4 and 1 on down is going to really, really read that whole chapter. It's a short, short chapter. Uh, that's going to happen on this side before the kingdom comes. And it's gonna to continue to happen in the kingdom.
Seven just means completion. Because if you if you have, uh, from what I understand, you can tell me I'm wrong. I'm that that's not true. I'll say, okay, I'm sorry. Okay. If you have uh, a woman, oh, another thing that 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 they're doing is that is clearly against the scriptures is if you have a wife who comes to IUIC, your wife's got to be in the truth too. So there's a lot of breakups, and that cause adultery. You cause adultery by causing them breakups, man. Guy comes in, you he comes to the school, you ask him, say, hey, do you have, a, which is none of your business. I don't, hey, look, I don't, the brothers at the New York camp, there's over 50 of them. I don't know which which one has a wife, have two wives, have no wives, have no woman, have a girlfriend. I don't know nothing because I don't ask them because that's none of my fucking business. How you going to say, well, brother, do you have a wife? Yes, I do. Why don't she come to the classes? Because she's a Baptist. Well, you know, you can't be with her if she's a Baptist. Give her uh, six months. That's what I heard that they taught. If they, if they don't teach that, please let me know and I'll apologize. See, I can apologize. You know, I'm man, a man enough to apologize if I'm wrong. But that's what I heard. Okay, let's listen to some more. If you can't, then you have to go. So, you, so you'd have like you'd, you'd like have services in your apartment. In my apartment. You'd like. If you can't, then you have. To, you have a choice to make. You have multiple wives, things of that nature. Apartments, smoking weed, uh, wanting multiple wives, things of that nature. And when the laws of God come out. You have a choice to make. You're either going to conform to what is written or not. If you can't, then you have to go. So, you, so you'd have like you'd, you'd like have services in. So he mentioned smoking weed, having multiple wives. If you can't conform, you have to go. They're kicking get people out for keeping the laws. It's lawful for a man to have more than one wife. That's in the law. In your apartment, in my apartment. you'd like push the furniture to the side and like bring everybody in. Like, yeah. was it pretty constrained? It, it, after a while, it got tight. Yeah, it got tight. <laughs> so that's what I did. Did you? Uh, were you living by yourself? No, my wife and kids. Okay. What do they think of this? Of Nothing. The, they agreed. The, the, okay. It, <laughs> they didn't mind. Hey, the, didn't mind the crowded house every. In every every re revolutionary, Sakata Shakur said this. Asana Shakur. She said a revolution a revolutionary woman needs a revolutionary man, and I agree that wholeheartedly. You cannot have someone like Malcolm X needed a woman that was by his side. Mm -hmm. Same with Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. You can't have a woman that's contrary to your way of thinking. Mm -hmm. It's going to fall right. apart. Are you a revolutionary man? I am. <laughs> I'm God's revolutionary man. <laughs> um, so every every it would be like if this is it a uh, Saturday Sabbath or a Friday night or what, um, when, when, classes, when do you have this? I had classes Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday okay. at my house. And how about how many people would be coming? Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday was the smaller classes. Mm -hmm. Saturday was the more crowded class, which was like maybe. 15, 20 people. Okay. So, like, describe it to me. Is it like, are you holding it like in your living room? In my living room. On like the couches? On I had a table like, set up, uh -huh. chairs around it. Uh -huh. I had it like that. And it would be in the evenings? Yes. So people would come after work? Correct. And were the, would these be people kind of coming off of other camps or were you kind of reaching no, I out wanted, to. I, I kind of, wanted fresh, new believers. But what I realized is that when people come from other camps, they tend to bring, uh, give me a nice word. You just heard it from the horse's mouth that if you, you got to be new. You got to be new. So if you're from another camp and you say, you know, I've been with GMS for five years and I see they're going off. So I want to get with you, Bishop Nathaniel. He's going to say, nope, because you've been in uh, GMS too long. So he's, Matthew's. Uh, what does it say? Matthew's, uh, matter of fact, let me go to that. Let me go to that. Matthew's 23. Get right to the point. Matthew's 23. Go right to the point.
Oh, but all their works they do for to be seen of men, they make broad, that's the marching, that's to be seen of men. Oh my goodness, sir, all these black men coming together, this must be the truth. And, and love the uppermost rooms at feasts. They're all, they're all elevated, the leadership is elevated, and the chief seats in the synagogues. Yeah, I want to read this whole chapter. Oh, this is what I wanted. This is what I wanted. See, if you're from another, we want new people. We want newborn babies that don't question nothing. But if you're part of GMS or any other camp, and you've been in the GMS or any other camp for five years or whatever, we will close the doors on your ass, going against the scriptures. Matthew 23, verse 13, But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. Hypocrites, for ye shut up the doors of heaven against men. Oh, you was part of the GMF for five years? You can't come in. Yeah, but I'm, I see it. I'm sorry. So this is this is clearly going against Matthew twenty three and thirteen. Their doctrine, right. and generally it may be a doctrine that goes against God's laws, right. and it will cause confusion. So listen, you go do your thing. Let us do this over here. You know, I can't have women coming in to learn the Bible. You know, women. Well, what about Hebrews? Wait a minute. What about Hebrews? What is that? Five and twelve. You need that one teach you again. So if you got a guy from GMS five years, he said, "Ah, GMS is going off. I want to get with you guys." So what scriptures come to your mind? Hebrews five and twelve. Was it tw five, five and twelve? Twelve and five. Five and twelve. So they, those that's two scriptures that you're going against. Black women today, Latin women, complain about not being married, not having a steady uh, family unit. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now they come in, they believe. Now you got some guy to the side talking about, oh, you could be my second wife or my third wife. No, you work in McDonald's. What are you talking about? So we can't bring those foolish doctrines in, and you're trying to build. He said you could work in a McDonald's so you can't afford two wives. Well, what if it's a guy that has a business and he's a he he's worth a hundred let's say a hundred and fifty five million dollars? Can he then say, Well, no, I can I got five wives, but I can take care of all of them because I'm worth a hundred over a hundred million dollars. Nope. You still can't work. You still can't do that. And you should be giving the money up to us. So you see the the holes in this in this thing right here. A family unit, you understand? Mm -hmm. So, the, so the crowds be mixed, men and women studying together, mm -hmm. um, and mostly black men and women, also Latino. What is the kind? Of, what was the kind of the mixture in your like? Who? who where were you? What was the kind of? It was black you know, and Latino. Uh, and was was that important to you? And it sounds like it is. Like to make that kind of outreach. It is, because this is not a, like people say, oh, you're a black supremacist. No, we're not a black supremacist. This is about the lost tribes of Israel, which includes blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's where your friends got it wrong. Mm -hmm. SPLC I'm talking about. Oh, they're a black supremacist group. Then when we send people who are Puerto Rican do the interview, oh, I don't want to do this interview because you don't look the way I want you to look, because they're trying to paint us into a particular corner. Well, I don't know if they're my friends. Okay. But, um, <laughs> All right. What you know of them, those, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I mean, do you think that that's a more priority for you than for other camps? Uh, uh, some camps, uh, 
what it, uh, outside of the ones that came from the original school, uh, they just say black, black only, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so for them, for maybe, example, uh, you have uh, camps. Uh, what's this guy's name? What's the guy with the missing the one tooth? He wears overalls. In the South, um, Crow not Crowley. Um, I can't remember his name, but in the South, there's some... Not One West. No, no. Outside of One West, there's some camps that teach black only. Black only. And not realizing that Puerto Ricans are our people because, um, according to Scripture, they're mixed. Mm -hmm. What we would, The common term today would be mulatto. Like, let me, let me show you a Scripture. In case but, you but, but, but in terms of One West, do you think that that's like a, a priority across... The, past the down. Downing is another one. Let me Downing. read it to you. Hosea 7 and 8. Ephraim, you heard the tribe of Ephraim, he hath mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. So it's telling you that Ephraim mixed amongst the people. So they have very light skin. Some can possibly look like you. Some can be as dark as me. So the Bible tells us from the time of captivity, Ephraim always mixed with the people that enslaved them. Some camps accept that. Some don't. Say, no, Puerto Ricans are not people. You understand? Mm -hmm. And when you say camps, but though you don't, you don't mean one West camp. As far as you know, all right. West, all, all one West, West holds to that. Say, okay. Yes. Um, so you understand what I'm saying? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and so, in, in terms of the time frame, we're now in like in 2003, 2000. When are you when you're having these like uh, the home learning sessions in, in in your house? That's 2003. Okay. Um, and what was the when did when did you realize okay that this is was there a moment you said okay this is working like this is yeah when we got a steady group of like uh, ten brothers that were consistent for like close to a year consistently being there, I said okay this should be the group I believe this is the group now that we can go on the streets and teach because I would just go on the street me Kanai and there was one other brother would go on the streets but everybody else I would just keep in my apartment but after I noticed about ten of these men were steady consistent. I said, okay, this is the group. We'll mm -hmm. start here. Mm -hmm. So from there, we would go Okay, out. so that's how you draw people, is that you would be do street corner teaching. Yes, that's what the Bible says to do. Mm -hmm. Let me show you, Sam, and, in case uh, you're not familiar with it. You know where I'm going? I'm going to Proverbs chapter 1 and, and verse 21. 20. 20. Wisdom. Wisdom. By the way, he doesn't go out in the streets no more. He got his men go out in the streets. None of those leaders go out in the streets no more. They graduated from that. Unless he goes out of town, unless he goes to Africa, Nigeria, he'll be out in the front main speaker, you know. But but in the states, he don't go out in the streets. Wisdom crieth without; she uttereth her voice in the streets. That's what the Bible says. So wisdom, when Christ taught the prophets, they were always out in the street. Mm -hmm. Um, and so this is this is how you would so you'd go this aside from the. My question is, why isn't he out on the street? Why isn't the leadership out on the street? That's my question. Learning sessions, you would have like a, a core group of some people. Typically, you're saying it would just be you and, and one or one or two other people in the early days. Yes. You'd be out on street corners in Harlem mostly. Uh, no, uh, we taught on Utica and Brooklyn, in Brooklyn. Okay. Utica Eastern Parkway. And would you would you be out on Saturdays or on Saturdays? Uh -huh. And, and why, why Saturdays? Oh, it was the Sabbath. It was the Sabbath. Yeah. So is that, we is we that had what? days off. Uh -huh. to, right. So right. Sabbath is not Saturday. Sabbath is comes in based upon a new moon. So, again, he doesn't understand the scriptures. Days, days are based upon the new moon. The new moon, months, high holy days. Every high holy day. Every high holy day. Every feast is based upon a new moon. 14 days, blah, 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 15 days, whatever, 10th day, 9th day at evening. No Friday sundown or Saturday sundown. So when they call themselves keeping the Sabbath on a Friday sundown, Saturday sundown, that's not necessarily the Sabbath unless it falls on a new moon. So so he's not going by the scriptures. And he can't say, well, I didn't know what well, you know because we here at GMS taught it. We taught it many a times. We're saying it right now. We're teaching it right now. Right, right, um, and that's how you drew. That's how is that how most people would 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 come to you. you you'd like it. Something would be drawn in. You'd say, "Hey, we're having a learning session." Yes, uh -huh. just like that. And our flyers. Okay, okay. and so so then you realize at one point, okay, this is like there's a a body of people who keep coming back.
and that must have felt good that yeah. this like that this it's that mustard seed that Christ mentioned in Matthew 13 it starts off the smallest of all seeds but in the end it's going to be the largest okay right now you have Roman Catholicism one of the largest religions Christianity followed by Islam but the truth of the Israelites this is going to dwarf everything mm -hmm. no matter what they do to me or any of the men right now mm -hmm. it's going to continue once the seeds has been planted that we're the people of the book you can't undo that okay mm -hmm. once it's like a blind blind man once you see you're not going back to darkness ever again you're going to stay in this so that's what's happening right now when did you move out of your um out of the, the, the house or you know the, the, the home did you did you say like hey, we have too many people we need to get a space to uh what year was that when did we set up 1088 what year was that 2006 7 i can't remember 2007 somewhere around there okay and and the um the gentlemen who are in the room with us now were these people who were yes they came all... to 1088 Okay. When we set up 1088, then they came. Okay. So, so, so nobody was here in the living room? In the living room, yes, but they're on Saturday here. That's okay. Asaph, Aithan, uh -huh. Yawasap, um, Kanai. Uh, those are the steady ones that was in. Was you in my living room, Ramaya? Okay, he was in the living room. Y'all wasn't. No, sir. Ramaya was. He was okay. in the living room. Okay. <laughs> was, I'm with, trying to think. With, with family? Yes. Um, in, in, so where was this new space? Uh, no, from Avenue 1088. Okay. And um, there you'd hold, similarly you'd hold Sabbath classes. Right. Or sa Sabbath, do you, you call them worship services? Are you, are you Sabbath service. Service, uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then also like, like other night classes or? Um, I believe Tuesday night we had something. Uh -huh. Tuesday night and Sabbath. Uh -huh. Okay. And... When did I mean now? Now you have camps across the country. Um, when did that outside of the country? Yeah, you know. right. And I do want to ask about the kind of international outreach. Um, but you know, when did? How did you grow from this one place in Brooklyn to? What was the first like satellite camp you had, and how did it kind of? Well, what we did was we had uh, set up uh, Skype. Was it Skype? Yes. We had Skype, that, and it was small. Skype was small back then, and but people would log on, like maybe ten people, and these p ten people came from, were from other cities, other you know states. So I'm not, when I say state, I'm talking about like uh, Texas, um, Florida, Chicago, like that, and mm -hmm. they would log on, and then they would go out and do the same street teaching okay. that we did, and started to grow from there. Right. Who, um, when did you set up like a, did you set up like a Facebook, a website? Um, yeah, we did that. We did that too. And did you consciously shift from um, street, the kind of street corner teaching to online teaching? Uh, not shift to, added to. Uh -huh. We added on to it. Because it still goes on. Right. We just added to it. And, and, and did you have like a particular, like, like one, like a, a, a younger, like, tech savvy person who was like uh yeah well the, the website was set up by a young man named zion he died a few years ago he set up the website um then younger brothers brothers came in and said oh i have talents in a b or c i could help here so you know it's an old expression get in where you fit in so wherever your gift skill or talent yeah. is is for the betterment of god's truth mm -hmm. so that's what they did right because because to me, that is one of the things that really sets IUIC, I wouldn't say apart because everyone does it, but, but I think about the, the online outreach, um, these like really, really nice, I mean, the, the videos you're doing right now. Oh, that's him. That's that guy right there. Okay. The, Captain uh, Zephyr, he does the, that. <laughs> the, the music videos. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that brother right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's Jonah. <laughs> You know, really, like, really, just like really slick professional, um, and this is the kind of material that that probably reaches, you know, more people than, than, uh, uh, you know, two or three people on the street in Brooklyn. 
um, you know, once something goes on Facebook, you know, tens of thousands. Well, professionalism is very important because professionalism uh, reflects whether or not uh, you believe or not. Uh, when a young brothers with me start, when we started going out on the street with the ten, they would hand up flyers that were smudged or crooked or would have like stains on them. You can't hand that out. That's not professional. You know, you have we have to step our game up um, because if you hand me a, a, some literature with fingerprints on it mm -hmm. and it's crumpled and wrinkled, you don't believe this. You mm -hmm. don't. You really don't take stock in what you're giving me. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. So professional is very paramount in this truth. Mm -hmm. Where did you learn this? kind of discipline, like where did that come from? I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> um, but, so, what was your day job all this time? Police, New York City Police Department, okay. that was my day job. And um, you're retired now? Maybe. Maybe, Are you still, I can't tell you. You can't tell me. Maybe, something all right, the reason why I went here, um, I told you in the beginning of the video, is because there's probably a second interview or it's on this video, video the individual interview, the inter interviewer con uh, asked uh, concerning, um, you know, GMS and the great doctrine. I'm, I thought it was on this one, maybe it's not, but look, I mean, we're, we're in an hour and 14 minutes in of a, a over two hour, uh, video. So this is what I wanted to catch. I figured I would catch it somewhere here. It could be somewhere around here. This is why I'm letting it speak. You know? So, you know, bear bear with me. And I'm getting ready to close it soon. I may come back. But I wanted to catch that part because he's going to bring up the, the great doctrine. So that means they're watching all of all of the groups. Okay. going on I can't <laughs> you can't tell me you said I'm gonna do your research I just can't tell you <laughs> I mean I think I, I don't think you're a police officer now but okay. but uh, um, but this that that was your career all throughout your kind of young adult and in in adult life was yes. when did you get involved in law enforcement what year was that? Hmm. I went from security to that and you never believe who, who had me get into that there was a, a, a Jewish man named, uh, from Eisner Brothers, Shalom Eisner. I don't know if you ever heard of him. No, I haven't. He owns a, a, a t-shirt warehouse on um, Ludlow and Essex. You know where the Nancy Street is? Mm -hmm. And he would always come by my job and see me and says, you know, you're doing a security thing. You're not making too much money. He says, you need to make more money than that. He says, I know what you're with that Bible thing. And he would always like try to joke me about the Bible. I would just always get on them. But it was never uh, a thing of a, I hate you, I got nothing like that. So. On whose part, on his, his on part? Both, on both, on both. Cause he knew what I taught. I said, hey, you know, you guys are Esau, you know, God hates you guys. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, well, let me help you out here. So I'm like, oh, what are you gonna do? So he went out and got an application and that's how that got started. Okay. So I see the most high uses people in various ways mm -hmm. for, his, for his life. So you're doing like you're doing private security, then you got involved in law enforcement. Yes. Right around what year was that? Um, that was eight, you know, ninety seven, ninety eight, somewhere around there. Okay. And so, you know, so I ask about the, the the discipline thing, also because the uh, I want to know a bit about the kind of the, the structure of IUIC, and and, and clearly. It's a very structured place. Just as I as I came in here, you know, there are rules about you know security check. My bag was checked. I was patted you down. You might do a Dylan roof. Please, <laughs> Lord forbid. But you never know. Um, we get a lot of hate mail. Um, and I have you written one of one of those letters, Sam? What do you think? I hope not. I'm gonna check your fingerprints. <laughs> Hey, get his glass and I'll hold it. I'm The, you know, even down to the, the titles that, that people have, you know, um, I correspond with Officer Isaac. Captain. Captain Isaac, sorry. Captain Isaac. Um, see, it's important. The titles are important. 
Um, it, it, and you know, I, I, I know we, we have bishops, we have, um, I, I don't know all the details. So I want to, you to, if you could kind of explain to me the, that kind of structure and, and the importance of that in, um, in the organization. Okay. You know where I'm going, right? Right back here. It's looking as the way he's going back to the Bible again. Yes. Uh, when you go to um, 1 Corinthians 14 and 40, God says, let all things be done decently and in order. So that's the premise. Everything must be done decently and orderly. And with a lot of uh, blacks and Latinos, uh, we don't like order. We don't. I'm talking about outside of the Word of God. The only time we really learn organization is when we are either in uh, with Europeans, with Caucasians. When we go to your jobs or uh, whatever it may be, we learn order. But when we come back home, we hate order. Mm -hmm. You understand? But order is very important for anything, whether it's a military, a school, anything. Even in the hospital, you have a ranking structure. A school system, you have ranking structure. Everything is based upon order. And that's what our people need to be taught. They must be taught order. Because what tends to happen is, if we all think we're, we're equal, then what happens, the next young man goes, well, I knew, I, I'm just like you, and I should be the one running this. Like when you read in the Book of Kings, you had young men kill kings to sit in their seat of authority mm. out of envy, jealousy, what, whatsoever, what it may be. So it's very important for us to learn to, to work as a body. You have to respect one another's position. You have to learn to respect the time someone has, their experience, and their knowledge. I'm going to cut this. Because I may come them. back. I was hoping that I would find this, uh, um, where they mentioned GMS and the grape doctrine. Right. I mean, that, that, so I, I, I'm stopping at uh, one, um, one hour and uh, 20 minutes so, in. So within this organization. So with that. How does that Let me see something. Work. I, I know that. You know what title do you use, and what title do you, know, do you have? 